Greetings, this is Darvain and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris. I believe this is the fourth series and I'm quite looking forward to uh, getting back into this one as we explore what's new with the Dick version 3.0.1 update that was released alongside, alongside Stellaris Nemesis. Quite looking forward to uh, playing Stellaris Nemesis but fortunately can't, I haven't got the funds right now to uh, be able to afford that straight away and after a few false starts with um, Evil Genius and well I will still be doing a uh, Let's Play of Evil Genius 2 but that game was disappointing and I've not really been able to get into it as much as I thought I would so maybe let's play and we'll change that maybe there'll be a few patches but we will see for now we are doing Stellaris okay now the first thing I notice is that we seem to have lost the United Nations of Earth and the Commonwealth of Man, the two human, the two human nation, uh, human empires, seem to have gone missing. And I'm not entirely sure why. I'm maybe they get revamped in uh, Nemesis, or maybe they just. I don't know. I mean, this is once again, this is just the base game, as we will carry on. Uh, series 3 we did the Zin Empire so in Series 4 we're going to move down and do the Kingdom of Yonderim the Divine Empire and they're avians not that that makes a difference it just looks cool they're alpine uh, as a species they are conformists so they get 30% governing ethics attraction they're natural physicists so plus 15% physics research but they're slow learners as a species, so they don't they're not they don't particularly gain experience as leaders very fast. Um, they're a divine empire and they're imperial. Um, now there are actually different uh, modifiers depending on whether you are imperial. Uh, yeah, democratic, oligarchic, dictatorial, or imperial. So imperial retains the uh, ed the increased edict capacity. Uh, dictatorial basically reduces emperor sprawl, which is new. Um, olig oligarchy uh, has faction growth improvements and. Democratic has automatic resettl resettlement uh, adjustments bonuses. So, be interested in seeing how some of those are. Let's have a look and see how the Divine Empire works. We have the Imperial Cult. The society has a dominant state religion where the ruler is worshipped as a living deity. So, I think Theros. We get yet another edict capacity and edict costs reduced by 25%. It's not bad. So that means we've got a edict capacity of plus two already. Aristocratic elite. This society has an entrenched nobility that occupies the upper echelons of society. So Capital buildings replace some administrative jobs with nobles. Okay, you can construct noble estate buildings that add additional noble jobs. And government, governor level caps are increased by one. It's not bad. So our governors should be relatively good. We're authoritarian, so we can have stratified economy, we can enslave aliens, but we cannot be democratic, either of it or, elig or oligarchic. Get plus 0.5 monthly influence 
and plus 5% work proper resource output but we are fanatic spiritualists plus 20% monthly unity plus minus 10% edict cost we can build temples uh, but we cannot use the full AI rights hmm. okay let's go with that now in the last one we we uh, were a small and we did I believe we were the elliptical as opposed to a ring we're gonna try the spiral arms we're gonna reduce everything to zero as we do normally no, not really. but from what I gather a lot of what makes uh, this update unique is our changes to first contact so what we are going to do is we are going to face off against one AI empire and we're going to switch that to random because we want to see how the uh, first contact works and for first contact we kind of need to uh, have an empire to be able to contact in the first place so sure let's go with that okay in the eon since the first primitive yonder communities took shape in the rugged mountain valleys of yonderim a civilization has spread and prospered Many false prophets took it upon themselves to offer spiritual guidance to our people as we advanced through the ages. But the true faith prevailed. The last heathen strongholds were vanquished after several bloody crusades, uniting us under the holy will of a single divine leader. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest, the finest minds of the Kingdom of Yondum have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Let's begin. Your Imperial Majesty, I am Vir, a prototype synthetic intelligence and your humble servant. My role is to provide you with advice and counsel as you lead our empire into the great unknown. You can change the tutorial over any time in the settings menu. Let's go back to the full tutorial. See what's changed, see if they've changed that at all. An excellent decision. You will have my full support. Good to know. Building a star empire can be a daunting task. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. First mission is to fully survey a neighboring star system. I have added it as an entry to the situation log. To access it, click on the situation bug and log button on the left section of the top bar or press F2. Hey, thank you, Vir. Okay, we'll do our usual. Let's the government it. screen presents us with information regarding our empire and its government. Here we can see our ruler and any related effects. Okay. So, our ruler, the god emperor Yirak. We are warlike. Nice. And a reformer, so we get um, extra unity. Don't have an air air at the moment. And our agenda is native privilege. So xenophobic ethic and attraction plus twenty and citizen pop happiness plus five. Not the best uh, agenda to have to start with, but we'll see. The demographics tab tracks the makeup and spread of our empire's populace. Okay. Also shows dominant traits among our Pops as well as modifiers to productivity and happiness among other things. So that hasn't changed much. Let's see what we've got. Contacts. Okay, so we've got the usual. Let's just lock that in place. We don't want that popping out. Obviously the update has basically refreshed all the settings again. In the contact screen, we see a detailed list of all the various empires we have encountered. Their opinions of us are visible at a glance and we can quickly and easily engage in diplomacy. Okay, excellent relations. Well, yeah, that's us. And they're a player empire, okay. 
The situation log displays a list of all currently available special projects, archaeology sites and various other points of interest. New items will likely appear as we begin exploring the galaxy. Yep, so uh, that's normal. Uh, I have important information for you. The anomaly screen list all yet as yet unsearched. Unresearched anomalies that we have encountered, not we've encountered any. The victory screen lists certain conditions that we can strive to fulfill to ensure that the legacy of our star nation will endure for as long as there is intelligent life in the galaxy. Okay, and we've got a score. So basically, we've got score victory. We have 185, and I, in a hundred years, we will win the game. Presumably. Okay. Via the market screen, we can buy and sell resources. At first, this is merely an internal market, but if enough empires establish contact, I expect they might form some sort of galactic market. Resources can be bought and sold using the appropriate buttons here, but be aware that buying and selling the resources will raise or lower the price of that resource respectively. Monthly automatic trade deals can also be set up in the section to the right. Okay. That's not changed. The Planets and Sectors screen provides an overview of all our colonized worlds, their pops, and their resource output. As our empire grows, it can be organized into sectors, which are helpful for administering larger empires. Sectors can be automated here, and if they are automated, they can be given a specialization and resources to enable planets within them to construct their own buildings. Yep. Upgrade buildings and districts on their planets. Okay, now apparently there's been improvements to the sector settings, so I'm looking forward to that. The Leaders tab lets us hire, dismiss, and assign idle governors, scientists, admirals, and generals. We have Hakanu, who is a bureaucrat, so increased administrative capacity from bureaucrats, that's nice. What we will do, we're going to set you to... We'll set you to balanced. And we'll give you a basis of resources to start with. Okay. Uh, In the expansion planner, we find nearby habitable planets that may present opportunities for colonization. We can build colony ships and issue them orders directly from this screen. Okay. Planet must be supplied. Then any anomalies found on the planet must be researched before the planet can be colonized. Starbase must also have been constructed in the planet system so that it lies within our borders. Okay, so no change there then. The Policies tab covers government policies, which have wide-ranging effects on how our empire is run. Okay, let's have a look. Diplomatic stance. Okay. Mercantile. Okay. Supremacist, so there's usual the usual stuff here. We monthly unity cooperative. Well we're warlike, so we're not cooperative, we can go with belligerent. Uh claim the stars or isolationist. Um Yeah, we want I think we're gonna go with isolationists rather than belligerent. We're not going to seek to conquer just yet. But we will, I mean, that will probably change. So we're going to switch our diplomatic stance to isolationists. Unrestricted wars, yep. Orbital bombardment, yep. Resettlement allowed. First contact protocol, we can be. Unknown dangers may hide among the stars. To ensure our continuous survival, we must be ready to strike without hesitation. Can attack neutral entities. Enables hostile first contact, such as abduction and dissection. Sounds interesting. OK. 
Okay. Cautious. We will take every measure to prevent information about ourselves from falling into alien hands before we have decided whether they will be friend or foe. We cannot attack neutral entities. Other nations will find it harder to establish communications with us. Negative first contact events are less likely to happen to us. Okay. Proactive. Meeting alien civilizations prevents an exciting opportunity to make new friends and fresh discoveries. We shall do our utmost to ensure that first contact happens smoothly, hailing unknown ships with a cordially phased greeting and a copy of our official and standard cyclopedia, along with its audio-visual companion dossier. Okay, we cannot attack neutral entities. Find it easier to establish communications. 50% more influence and discovery speed is in for first contact and discovery speed is increased by 10%. We are going to remain cautious to go with our isolation of starts. Uh, we won't go aggressive just yet. Okay, initial border status. Uh, we want isolationists, so we're going to close our borders. Economic policy. We are militarised. Makes sense, we're slightly warlike. Trade policy, let's go with... The marketplace of ideas. We like marketplace of ideas. Robotic workers. Okay. We are allowed. We're going to allow robotics, but we can't use full AI rights, so we're not going to go full down there. Refugees, not yet. Population controls, yes. Slavery, yes. And purge. Oh, we're not xenophobic. Or anything else, so we can do only displace them. We can't kill pip our population just yet, but we are going to keep to ourselves. We're going to allow slavery. Here, empire-wide edicts, practices that can be enforced by spending some of our resources, can be enacted. Hey, thank you. And we get access to veneration of saints. Priest output plus 20%, spiritualist ethics attraction plus 25%. Rather than focusing exclusively on this temporal world, we should provide our spiritual guides with whatever they need to prepare us for the next. 65. Yeah. Okay, that's how that's what we're going to do you. And that's for our first of three edicts. Okay. Society map. The tradition screen displays the tradition trees available to our empire. A tradition tree must first be adopted before any traditions within it can be unlocked. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's changed. We'll explore that later on. The relics screen allows us to view and activate our relics and also to enact decisions making use of minor artifacts. Okay. Okay, plan decisions marked with planetary decision can only yep that's uh, ancient, the ancient relics DLC stuff not really been changed much by the looks of it ship designer the ships in use within our empire are designed here new hull sizes and components will be unlocked as we research new technologies yep the usual in the fleet manager we can create templates for our military fleets. As our fleets grow in size, these templates make it easier to quickly order replacements for any losses they may have sustained. The Satanis Starflock. Okay. Nice. The technology screen is where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three different fields, with each field typically having three available research options. Research technologies without assigning, without assigning a scientist to the relevant field, but this will take significantly longer and is generally not recommended. Okay, well, let's have a look at what we've got, but first let's see what's researched in each one, because I want to see what changes we've 
have happened so far. So, these are just our starting physics techs. Sentinel point defense, red laser, hyper drive, generator district. I was in the technician jobs, yep, that's not changed too much. Deflectors, reactor booster, fusion reactor, research labs. Research jobs, that's not changed too much, okay. With computing expertise, it's going to be fun, and we want. So we're going to give you the physics research from researchers. Plus 20%. Quantum theory. Okay. See, society, what have we got? Temple. Okay. Priest jobs plus two. Spiritualist ethics attraction plus five. Turn consumer goods into unity, research, and amenities. It's not bad. Society, planetary administration. Bursa housing, noble administrator. Unity and stability. Yeah. Ministry of Artifices, precinct houses, colony ship, agriculture district, commercial zones, stronghold. Okay. Now we've got this is New World Protocol. So that's gonna be good for colonizing. Not much else though. So we're gonna go with increased unity for planetary unification which is always an option if you've got the prosperous unification or origin so that's pretty cool finally we have see nuclear missiles and a missile battery flat battery construction ship research station mining districts resource silos Okay, alloy foundries, civilian industries. We also have, and I don't know if you've seen this here, industrial district. Housing plus two, artisan jobs plus one, metallurgist jobs plus one. So you get one each of the jobs, but they're districts as well now. So we can, don't need to rely on buildings for foundries and civilian industries. That's pretty cool. Soul Army, Starport, Outpost, Corvette, Silent Ship. Nice. Mining station output. Minerals from miners. Minerals from Starbase constructions. Okay. I think that's Nebula refineries. So we're still going with a good, with good solid. The faction screen gives an overview of the populace's political leanings. Be aware that shifts in the social political climate may give rise to factions. Details on faction sizes, attractiveness to our pops, and how content they are can also be found here. Okay, authoritarian. Yep, twenty-five percent. We are because we're authoritarian and we're autocratic. So. We won't get many egalitarians. Xenophobes are plus 20%. Uh, xenophiles, right? Oh, uh, yes, let me. Native British. Xenophobes, not xenophiles. Okay. So it's still basically yonder him first. Militarist, no current factors, current factors, spiritualist, plus 25% and we're spiritualist. So we won't get very many militarists. Through the claims interface, we can spend influence to lay claim to star systems owned by others. Having a claim on a system gives us a valid casus belly against the owner, allowing us to declare war for the purpose of conquering it. Okay. Just map mode. Sure, okay. Close back to you. 
highest clanless system was the one gaining ownership and the successful conclusion of the war. Okay, that's fine. Let's close that. And we're going to close the galaxy map for now. We're not going to go back to you. Species. The species screen lists all types of nominally intelligent beings we have encountered. We can toggle species to display only citizens of our empire or all known denizens of the galaxy. Okay, Mod modify uplift, set default rights, and set rights. We've got a usual list. Set the species rights. rights list allows us to customize the citizenship and living standards of a certain species, amongst other things. Okay. Let's see what we got. We have citizenship. Full citizenship, they can produce leaders. This is our default. Residents, so they less than slaves and undesirables. Well, we're going to keep them as slaves. We want slaves. Slaves are pretty good. That might change, though. Okay. Can't have them as a stratified economy. They get. We can give them. We can give our slaves decent. Conditions, I didn't go to basic substance. Basically, we're going with our rulers, and we've got nobles, so. Decent conditions. We'll go Egyptian. We're going to put them on basic substance. We don't need to give them anything else. Okay, affected pops must be free or battle thralls. To get that, okay. Yes. Living standards. Keep them as slaves. Military service. Soldiers only. Organization rights. No, it's just us. Population controls. Uh, we will. We'll let them go. We'll let them breed. Prevents pops of this species from moving freely between our worlds. Um. Sure, we want to know what planets they're on. So we're going to change you. Chateau slavery is the only one we got. Choices from jobs plus ten percent. Cannot be employed in ruler or specialist jobs. Okay. So that's the default rights. Doesn't make any difference because our rights at the moment for the Yondar. Yondar first. Citizenship. They get full citizen, obviously. Living standard. Stratified economy. Okay, ruling class. Slaves and workers are down, but we are massive. The impoverished masses, yep. Military service, full military service, colonization. No pop controls. Uh, do we want our pops to move freely between worlds? Um, you know what? No. And since we're not being enslaved, we don't have chateau slavery. That's not bad. Then we have... We've already seen our leaders. But that's them all set. So that's pretty good. Leaders. So, yeah. Let's get with... See how yonder him this is. Empire capital. This is our homeworld and the capital of our empire. The planet summary screen, which we are currently looking at, provides an overview of the planet's important statistics and allows us to set a designation if desired, as well as the option to automate the planet. Okay, now this is interesting. Okay, number of districts, pops, stability, sign government, etc. We have slot some slight changes. We're gonna put some automated one for you. Blockers or features, yep. That hasn't changed. 
Decisions. Changed. But you'll see, our buildings down here, we've got fewer buildings now. Because we need fewer buildings. We start with a temple. So we've got two priest jobs to start with. We have our research labs, which is a building. We have administrative offices. Planetary administration. Two more building slots. Which we can do all sorts of stuff. Okay. So we'll see how they go. But what's up here is we've got the new industrial district. Production minerals and it does so. We've got three industrial districts, three city districts, three generator districts, a mining district, and an agriculture district. Okay. So that looks interesting. See how they go. I mean, what's the, what's the five? Five. So they're like uh, industrial and city districts. Now. Uh, is these are our natural districts. Okay. Here we see a breakdown of this planet's population, divided into layers or strata. Okay, once again, specialists are up here, so no changes there. This is where we manage all ground forces on this planet. This screen also tracks how much devastation or damage the planet itself has suffered. Okay. So, we don't need to worry about that. Our shipyard. Uh, this is our system's star base. These upgradable stations mark star system ownership and are most often tasked with producing all types of ships. Okay. Defenses, we don't need any defenses, just jets. Our usual. Pugent hatch, impudent, fierce hatchling, and Titanic Starflock. Okay. Military fleets are used to protect our emerging empire from threats or to expand our glorious rule through force of arms, if we so wish. So that hasn't changed. See, this is our construction ship, which is used to construct space stations. When an astronomical object, such as a planet, has been surveyed, we can order this ship to build a research station or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. Okay. Yep, let's get you going then. Yep, your moan. Haven't got any. Yep, for now. And of course, a science ship. Where are we? We're over there on that spiral arm, okay. And we can go this way? Or that way? Looks like I might be able to go down there, but I'm not sure. Okay. This is our science ship, which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in a star system. A planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. Okay, let's, well, since we're on this end, let's go out for the outer arm. Uh, we're going to go there, actually. Survey that one. And this is automatic surveying rather than auto-explore. So, we're done. And, well. You know what? We've seen this, so, yeah, let's go for it. A little. Let's see what's happening first. We need to survey our star system. Music's still as good as always. To overcome the vast distances that separate star systems, our scientists have developed the hyperdrive. This device permits travel at speeds far exceeding that of light between systems connected by hyperlanes. Okay. See our new air. The new air. We have Saint Saki, who's expansionist. Oh, that's a nice. I'll look. 
and an investor. So our trade value and our outpost stuff will cost less. That's nice. So we'll be able to expand. That's what we're going with. Okay. Let's see, traditions available. Who have we got? No, no. Diplomatic grants. Supremacy. Harmony. Prosperity. Domination. Okay, let's go with. So we go with our usual approach then. We're going to go with some prosperity to start with. Mining station output increased by 20%. Yes. reduced or build cost reduced build group yeah reduced by 10% increased by 25 I think we'll do that one it's fairly standard construction complete okay you're gonna moan because low resources because for now, that's all right, that's fine. Alloys and insurance cards. keep these episodes to about 45 minutes anomaly found okay hard briefly detected inside the upper uh, mid-sized vessel was briefly detected within what does leave be for now Okay, traditions. It's anomaly, anomaly research speed, leaving you B for now. City districts provide housing. Uh, building upkeep and district upkeep. Don't really need much more. So we're going to go with a clear block of, block of cost. Domination, we like domination.
Yay. Planet Anomaly, yep. We've seen this one. Colony designation icons, yes, I think we will. Construction complete. Okay, we'll return to base for now. As we explore Bernie. Let's see what we got. Um, we can have Governor Level Cap, Capital Buildings, Enforcers. Okay, and we've enhanced surveillance. Well, we're going to go with Colonial Viceroys because Governor Level Cap increased by two plus the one we plus one we already get. That's probably worth us adopting straight away. So we're going to do that. Because we want to make the most of our leaders. Well done. The first survey of a star system beyond our own has been completed. We now have access to planetary data that the astronomers on our home world could only dream of a mere generation ago. Okay. So we are going to research this anomaly. Energy readings and emanating from this planet. Okay, so we got our first anomaly. Meanwhile, can we send power to construct a star base? Not yet, because we're lacking five. Well, we can. We can send one over there. And then build your star base. Sure, we'll do that. We may want to consider building a second science ship. This would double the speed at which we can survey our galactic neighborhood. Okay, now we know that one, don't we? Situation log, second science ship. So let's go to the shipyard and build a science ship. Now that we have begun exploring our neighboring stars, it might be time to extend our reach. A starbase can be built around stars in surveyed systems to expand our borders, allowing us to claim new regions of space. Yep. Uh, so that's the starbases. We want a starbase, which we need. We're already planning on doing that anyway. Yes, we're building a starbase. districts and right now what we need is probably more minerals so can't afford you we are one short for a new min for new minerals not decisions see what else we got we got Clear the blockers. Domination traditions, yes. Well, since it's already we're already paused and it's just come up to 45 minutes, I think we'll call it there. So, I hope you like what you see in here in this uh, first episode episode of series 4 of Stellaris looking at the uh, 3.0.1 Dick update named after Philip K. Dick a glorious sci-fi writer of some renown 
back in the day. I mean, I don't know if anyone managed to catch the uh, series of Electric Dreams, or is it PK, uh, uh, PK Dick's Electric Dreams, or whatever it was called, which were some short stories on Channel 4, which was a British channel, which, well, is a British channel, based on some of the stories that PK Dick wrote which is very kind of like Black Mirror and but uh, considering the short stories were pulp science fiction back in the 20s it's actually quite profound so I think they, I think all in all they made a good choice in naming this update so let's save our game we are Da, 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 da. Kingdom of Yondering LP one. So this has been Darvain. If you like what you've seen here, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>